Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a just fun, quick and easy watercolor card demo. And I did this uh, kind of sketch last night on a watercolor postcard. And I wanted to try these out because these are the brand new cotton watercolor postcards and greeting cards from Arteza. Um, here you can see the postcards come in a tin. Really, really handy. And you've got the to and from on the back. All you've got to do is decorate the front and then mail it. But it is cotton watercolor paper, so you don't have to sacrifice quality. Usually the postcards that I've seen for watercolor have all been cellulose, which is fine. But if you can get it for cotton, it's um, it's nicer, nicer to paint on. And they also have 100% cotton greeting cards. And that's what we're actually going to paint on today. I'll be trying this for the first time. And they come with envelopes of the little Arteza logo on the flap there on the front. And um, just plain on the back for writing. So of course you could paint a little ditty on the corner if you want to do just to make it match. Maybe we'll do that. Who knows? and I've just started by taping my card down onto my mat and I'm just pressing down the edges with my finger to make sure that I don't um, that I don't get any um, you know any stuff seeping under my border that's why I taped it down you could just clip it to a board or something but I didn't like how sloppy my edges were here I mean it's fine but I wanted a nice crisp edge so that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to start by wetting my paper about a third of the way down just with clear water. And it's taking the water quite well. I'm using uh, my Creative Mark um, Mimic Faux Squirrel Brushes. Maybe go a little bit lower than the horizon if you want to. And then I'm going to grab some, I'm going to mix up some cobalt blue. These are the Renaissance pans. I, I picked these up uh, lately and I was like, man, I really like these. These are so fun. So I decided that I'm going to use them a little bit more. Um, I don't think I have an ultramarine blue in this kit here, but the cobalt's pretty close. I'm going to, and I'm also going to add in some cerulean here. Because of both of those colors, the cobalt and the cerulean are liftable. And if I want to lift out a class some clouds, I can do that. So whenever I'm adding color to my landscape, to a sky, I usually start at the top and work down so it can get a little bit lighter towards the horizon. And if I want to put more color in there, I'll add that towards the top. And oftentimes you have more of like a, a ultramarine towards the top of the sky and it fades down to more of a cooler cerulean as you work your way down the paper. I could even go in with a little bit of Prussian blue if I want a little bit darker. That also has uh, some sedimentary qualities. I don't know if my sky is really dark enough to lift off clouds, but you certainly can if you want to. Now I'm going to grab uh, I think I'll grab some of that Prussian blue. I'm going to grab, well, let's see. Yeah, let's take the Prussian blue. Let's add a little bit of water in here. Now, I'm going to let the sky and the, and the water blend together a little bit. It's going to give me a little bit more of a um, misty effect. Like, you know, there's the mist on the pond type effect. I'm using my brush on the chisel edge and just kind of bringing it up. The key is not to have any big puddles. If you have big puddles, you're going to end up with blossoms and that's not what you want. You don't want to have blossoms. Grab a little bit of that cobalt. Any of the colors that were in the sky are fair game to be in our pond. And you can have more ripples towards the front. So I did not wet the area of the pond except for where it was close to the horizon. The rest of it was dry. All right, so now I want to do some rocks towards the bottom of my paper. I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray, which is, I know is a color I don't use all that often, but um, sometimes it's fun just to grab a palette you don't use very often and use the colors that are in there. And this paint, the Payne's Gray from Renaissance is really pretty. It's got, um, it's got a lot of color in it for a gray. The Payne's Gray is often made with like violets and um, and blues, and I just, I really like this particular one. And see, it doesn't look like much in the swatch, but it's really pretty when you have it kind of diluted out. And even though we do have some wet paint around, I'm not too worried about it. 
I just do some freeform rock shapes. Maybe we'll go a little higher with this rock over here. Let it guide the eye off the uh, off the page. I love rocks. I went down to Scooter Point this weekend, and um, I just sat there on the edge of the cliffs and just watched the waves crash in. So windy though, I had to be careful. I couldn't. I had to sit on the cliffs. I couldn't stand because I was getting so <laughs> blown around by the wind. I'm like, I'm gonna go over if I stand. So that would not be a good a good scene. Uh, I'm gonna add some yellow ochre here. Mm, I love yellow ochre. I just feel like that is just the color. It just makes everything better. It makes everything look nicer. I don't know why. And I'm gonna take some of this, um, oh, kind of magenta color, I'd say. Of course, follow along with whatever you have. Don't feel like you have to have this exact brand, these exact colors. You know, approximate. Use what you have. You know, there's no watercolor police that's gonna knock on your door and say, uh, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, sir. What pink was that? I don't think that's the right pink. I think you use Bordeaux when she's using, she's using magenta. Nobody's gonna do that. You don't gotta worry about that. Okay, so now I want to pull up some grasses. I know the sky's a little wet, so I gotta be careful. Um, but I don't mind if I get a little bit of ink blending or, I mean, watercolor mixing. I'm cool with that. So I'm gonna take this funny looking brush. Take a look at this. This is called a, a sword. Okay, it's got really long, if I tip it on its side, look how it's real skinny. If I do it on the side, it looks kind of like a long sword. Um, I'll show you a dry one so you can see the difference. Where is that guy hiding? Here we go, here's a big one that's dry so you can see. See how it looks kind of like a sword? These are real nifty. This is also by Creative Mark. This is the Black Knight Sword Liner. Again, it is, um, it is vegan. There's no fur in this brush. And it does hold quite a bit of paint, and it holds, and it, you, you can get a really fine line. It holds a lot of paint because you got all that, all those hairs. But because it comes to such a short point, you know the the bristles taper. You can get really fine lines, kind of like a liner brush. So um, it's a fun brush, and I love that it gives me some more random effects. And I'm gonna go right in. I'm gonna add some little grasses, and it's okay if my colors want to seep around and blend into my rocks. I really don't want them blending into the water too much, but it's okay if we have some fuzzy ones. I'm not gonna worry about that. And look at, we did all that with one load of the brush. Isn't that cool? All right, now I'm gonna blot this section right there, just cause that is a little bit more blendy than I want. Um, but other than that, I think I think we're good. Now I'm gonna maybe I'll blot a little bit of that too, just because it is bleeding quite a bit. I'm gonna grab my heat tool and dry this. Mostly, I just want to dry the sky. I don't need to dry the rocks because I like it when the um, when the watercolors blend down to the rocks. I think it is a really neat effect, and it looks like moss. And when you have rocks near the water, you're generally going to have some mossy effects. So that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I like those little happy accidents and those like fun things that happen when we're when we're doing that. So there we go. Sky's dry. If you want to dry your sky before you even go into that first layer, go right ahead. That's I totally understand. All right, now let's do some darker green. Um, let's add some like a hunter green or like a hooker's green deep in there. Let's do some more. Use your brush straight up and down, you're gonna get a really nice fine line. I also like to throw in some movement. And because you put, um, and actually for this, you might actually wanna mix your paint and then load it onto the brush because uh, it's really hard to get those long bristles into the, the paint there. Um, because this way I can really sop it up there. Well, um, I think it's nice to add a little bit of movement so I can actually put some bristles that are coming out in front of the rocks. Because when you get that kind of pondy, marshy uh, area, a lot of times you'll just have all of these grasses just growing and you'll have some cattails and it's just, 
this is really nice. We have a lot of, actually, we have the cattails growing in our ditches around our house this time of year. It's pretty. You see the goldenrod and those purple flowers and the cattails. I love it. And I want to kind of have a little bit of a, of a scale. So I've got these really tall, long ones over here. And then I've got some shorter ones. We am going to put a couple longer ones over there. You can have a couple go in the opposite direction too, just for a little bit of uh, variety. It just kind of fills up the uh, the scene a little bit. All right, we're gonna go back to that flat brush, but we do need to clean it because we got we got green paint on there. We don't need the green paint. We're gonna clean that off. We are going to grab some of a br any brown you want. This is probably. Um, Man, it looks like it's probably a burnt sienna, but it actually is a little bit duller than a burnt sienna. It might be like a um, a cypress brown or something. Doesn't matter. Use whatever brown you have. Seriously, what I'm telling you about this, you can use what you have. And we're going to put some cattails. And don't worry if they're not um, attached to any of the grasses. You can use a wider brush if you want a taller cattail, or you can just do two side by side, two little strokes side by side. Think of rhythm, think of notes on a page when you spread these out. And I apologize, the water pump's probably gonna go on in just a second because I just heard the water running upstairs. We got laundry going. You know, it's a never a quiet moment around here. That's all right, I hope you understand. This is gonna be a nice quick project though. Don't like to fall out of the groove. And we can have one just kind of starting off the page. I like that because it's like carries your eye over. All right, so generally your reeds that cattails are, um, they're a little bit lighter in value. Oh, don't leave your brushes in your water if they have wooden handles. Actually, just don't leave your brushes in your water. It's a terrible habit. Um, I don't know why I, I do that so often. And I'm actually gonna switch to a round brush for that. I'm gonna go with, um, oh, you know what? Number five round would be just dandy. Do we have one of those? We got a number six. That's close enough, especially when it comes to a nice good point. I'm going to grab, um, let's see. Let's take some of that yellow ochre and let's mix it with some of that nice uh, sap green we're using. That'll make a nice light kind of springish green. And we'll just go ahead and add some thicker reeds to those guys. And then um, they usually have kind of like this little, um, uh, I don't know what it, it's kind of like, it's always kind of like a yellow ochre to brownish color. It looks like a little um, kind of stem coming out of the top of them and I'm going to throw them on there. Sometimes they're right up straight, sometimes they fold over, but they'll add a little bit of movement. Now, if you get them a little off-center, like I did on some of them, what you want to do is just grab some more of the brown. All those ones where you got them a little off-center, make your cattail a little bit fatter. I'm just going in, fattening any of those ones up where the, um, where I put the little stem in a little off-center. Okay. Now, on the other one, I did, um, I did, a, uh, like a goose flying in the air, but I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun if I did like uh, maybe some dragonflies. So let's do, let's take some of that purple that we used in the water there, in the rocks. So that was that magenta color. Well, let's take that and add a little bit of the, um, add a little bit of the cobalt blue to that. And we'll make ourselves kind of a little bit more of a purpley color. And let's just Freeform on some little little dragonflies. Cause you see so many dragonflies around the pond. I'm just gonna do the wings first, then we'll do the bodies in a blue, I think. Let's do three because three's a nice little thirds. Things in threes look pretty. Okay, for the body, let's use um Let's use that Prussian blue. Do a little dot for the head and we'll do a body. 
Dot for the head and the body. Dot for the head. And a body. It's pretty sweet. Alright, I want the rocks to have a little bit more oomph, so what I'm going to do is grab my flat brush and I'm going to go back in with a Prussian blue. Let's see, do I have anything on that brush? No, it's nice and clean. Well done, me. I cleaned my brush. Doesn't always happen. I like to use a flat brush for doing like rocky details because I just find that it helps me not fuss because sometimes, you know, we get a little fussy with our with our rocks and and I think that's where people have a hard time with rocks. They just get too um they get too precious with them. They get too fussy and then they don't end up looking like rocks. I don't want to get rid of the colors and stuff they've already made, but I do want to add just a little bit of detail here and there. All right, we're going to let this dry, and then we'll come back and finish it up. All right, now I was looking at this, and I was looking at my original one, and I'm like, you know, this is pretty much where I left off here. So if you want to leave it like this, that's awesome. But I think I want to take this a little bit further. And um, one of the things I thought would be really neat is grabbing some gouache. And I had this, I, you know, when you don't clean your table up between projects, you've got all sorts of good stuff hanging around. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try that and see how a little gouache might work with this. So I'm going to grab, the, grab a nice, uh, oh, kind of like a spring green here. And I'm going to mix that with some yellow ochre. I'm also going to grab some of this bright yellow because I think I want to put some goldenrod in the mix here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the, uh, the, the sap green color there. We'll mix this together and we'll see what we get there. I might need a stiffer brush. Gouache is an opaque watercolor, so I'm not going to hurt my watercolor brushes by using it. And I'm going to throw in a few blades. I think I need something a little bit brighter. I'm gonna grab some of that Naples yellow. I think I'm gonna go with a bigger, with a, a firmer brush though. I'm gonna show you what I like to use for gouache because they're very inexpensive and easy to find. I use brushes that are meant for like acrylic toll painting, like these Zen All Media brushes. They work really well and just got a little bit more, a um, little more oomph to them. But any of your, uh, any of your, Golden Taclon brushes will work pretty well. Things that feel like they're just a little bit too stiff for, um, for watercolor are gonna work really well with this technique. Actually, I'll use the liner in the Zen line because then I won't have to reload so often. So I'm gonna get that wet so that um, it can pick up that color. This little ceramic dish is from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was so cute. It was meant for like, I think trinkets and rings and things like that, but I thought, you know what's so, uh, it's so cute. So I'm just going to throw a few in there. Oh, we got the furnace starting up. I just waited. I waited for all that stuff to stop. <laughs> oh my. You'd think it's a Monday. It's really a Thursday. And I'm like a day late from doing my watercolor Wednesday. <laughs> this week's a mess. What can I say? <laughs> all right. Another thing I thought would be really fun here is to add some metallics to our little dragonflies. So what I did was I grabbed my metallic watercolors. These are the Arteza ones. You can use whatever brand you have. I'm just going to grab some metallic. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm going to add that to the wings, this purple metallic. You could also use mica powder and mix it with like a little bit. Well, you know, if you have gum arabic, use gum arabic, but if you don't, just use a little, mix it with a little bit of glue or something to help it stick. I think I'm going to use more of like a turquoise color for the body. Isn't that a pretty color, this aqua a turquoise color? Now, I sprayed this about five minutes ago um, because when you're working with metallics, it's a good idea to spray it ahead of time and then let them kind of, um, uh, kind of reactivate. Now, I also think think I want to add a little bit of shadow on the um, shadow and highlight on the cattail since I've you know since you know we're doing it anyway we're we're adding gouache why not I mean you could also use white watercolor uh, but I'm going to use some yellow ochre and Naples yellow um, gouache here with that round I think it's number number two I was thinking it was number four I'm going to dab on just gotta pick a side that's gonna be your highlights really at this point we don't have a really strong sun source I'm just gonna dab 
on the left hand side of these cattails. It also will help give you the texture because the cattails have this very, well furry texture, that's why they call them cattails because they are like a cat's tail. They're fluffy and actually when they start to go by they get this like white fluff that um, that kind of starts to explode from them. If you've ever had a cattail bouquet in your home you might notice that like it just can get really messy. It can like, you know, let loose all this like white fluff. And then if you want a shadow, you could do a shadow on the other side. I think I would just go ahead and use my Payne's Gray. Maybe add a little bit of brown to it just to tone it down. And I'm going to use it really dry though. I do need to add some water to activate that paint. But I don't want it super, super wet. Hopefully that's not too wet. Just kind of tap a little bit on the opposite side. If it's too wet, it's going to lift that paint underneath. I'll just give you a little bit of texture in there and a little bit of dynamic shading. We all need a little excitement in our lives, don't we? A little dynamic shading in our peaceful pond scene. Today, it's weird. It's like today's like going to be 80 and it's uh. Uh, unusual for September. Um, great kayak day because it's not very, um, it's not very, whatchamacallit, it's not very windy out. So I think I might actually go in, maybe put a few little cracks in the rocks. I love to do that sort of thing. I just love, yeah, you're going to Acadia National Park on the coast, our, our main coast this, this far north is so rugged and rocky and gorgeous. I just love the textures and, um, I think rocks are definitely my favorite landscape element to paint. I'm also going to add a little bit of shadow around these. That little clump of um, grass is there. I'll give that a little bit of crevicey goodness there. I feel like I'm not very defined over there. Let's give those uh, let's give those grasses a place to plant out of. Let's start them off right there maybe. And then we could put the rock in front of it because I feel like it's a little confused what's happening there. What is going on? What's going on here? It's a little confusing. So let's get some grasses growing out there. And then, oh, we could take any of our rock colors. And maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. I'll do the watercolor first, see if that's got enough oomph. If not, we can add a little bit of the can add a little bit of the white. I do love the way like the watercolors react. Alright, gee, what else do we need? I don't know. I don't think we really need anything. You know what? I do want some spatter though. You don't have to do this. That's why I said when we stopped the watercolor and we started playing with our metallics, I'm like, you know, you don't have to do it. No peer pressure here on Lindsay's channel. You do your own thing, my friend, and I'll do mine, which is spattering, because I got metallic paints here, and it's going to look fantastic if I spatter it. I think, hopefully, I can avoid spattering the camera. Then we've got this little, almost like, um, I don't know, we've got metallic -y things going on that could be like fireflies, even though they're not flat firefly colors, but I like it. Oh, you know what else would be pretty? Why don't we do some little purple and yellow weeds, like um, like goldenrod and stuff. Let's throw a few goldenrods in there. I know if you're allergic, you probably don't like it, but you're not going to smell it on your paper. It's not going to give you any pollen or dander or whatever it is. And then we could, you know what? I was thinking we could do those like little... Um, those little purple lavender looking flowers that grow near the water, but we already have, um, we already have dragonflies and other purpley things, so, I don't know. Actually, it's not gonna hurt anything, why not? We can do that too. Because they're pretty. Depending on how concentrated you have your paint, it can look a little more red or uh, a little more pink or a little more purple, depending on how you have it concentrated and what colors are around it. Color theory is so fun. All right, hey. That's okay, I like that just fine. I don't know about you, I like it just fine. 
It's a nice relaxing project, you know? Man, you're stressed out. Kids are going this way and that. Are they learning from home? Are they at school? I don't know. It's all stressing. Whose schedule is what? Time to relax a little bit of pond life painting. All right, I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool real quick, and then we'll take up our tape and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I also just did a quick little doodle on this envelope, on the back of the envelope, just because I think that's always pretty when you decorate an envelope and, um, you know, it matches the card. Of course, it does warp the envelope a little bit because this isn't watercolor paper, but I still think it's worth doing. It's fun, it only takes a few seconds. Um, okay, so now let's take our tape off here and see what we've got. This is my favorite part. Um, oh good, the tape comes off nice and clean. Uh, a tip, I know I've mentioned it before, but in case you're new, a tip for helping your tape remove, like if you're using masking tape or whatever, or tape that just doesn't want to come off very cleanly, if you heat it with a hair dryer or your heat tool, that will warm up the adhesive on your tape and help it come back. Oh, I think that's so sweet. And look at the nice, pretty sparkle you get. Um, I don't know if I can catch the, the light very well because my lights in here are designed not to glare. <laughs> but it's got a really pretty sparkle and um, it's simple, but definitely something you can send to a friend. And uh, I like this paper a lot. It's just, uh, it's a cotton watercolor paper. There, I believe these come in two packs of 25, so it's like 50 uh, watercolor cards. I can't remember the price right offhand, um, but they were about the same as what the uh, cellulose watercolor cards from other brands cost, and I do like the cotton paper better than those cellulose ones, so that is really nice. I like to paint on this card size format because it's just, it's just nice, it's doable, it's, you know, you can do it in a few minutes, um, so it makes it less daunting. And there's just the watercolor one with no, um, no metallic added, certainly pretty as well, and that's on one of their postcards. So I'll have everything linked down below if you want to check anything out. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go, and until next time, happy crafting!